Well, good morning and welcome to South Point Church. I want to say good morning to the Leonard Town campus. Good morning, Leonard Town. It's great to have you here. I want to wave and say hi to Lusby. Everyone wave and say hi to the Lusby campus. Hey, we're South Point where we're one church in multiple locations. My name is Matt. I'm what they call a lead pastor here at South Point Church, and I'm just part of the team. So glad and fired up that you're here this morning. Um, hey, I want to start off by saying something. I've been on a summer study session, so I haven't been up here the last couple weeks, and I want to thank those that have spoken uh, the last couple weeks. Um, but maybe you haven't heard of one of our famous saying here at South Point, so I just want to make sure that we start off uh, this Sunday um, with a saying that we say here at South Point a lot, and it goes something like this is, we really don't care why you're here this morning and here's why. It's because at South Point, you, this is a place where you can come as you are. And the good news is, is that none of us have to stay that way. There's even better news. There's great news is that it doesn't matter where you've been because God is more concerned about where you're going. And lastly, there's this greatest news that has ever hit the planet Earth is it doesn't matter what's been done by you or to you because my life, your life, and our life doesn't have to be defined by what's been done to us or by us. Instead, it can be defined by what Jesus already did on the cross. So if you only hear one thing this morning, I hope that you hear that you matter deeply to God. Now we're about to start a brand new series and I'm fired up to start this series. It's called Yes to Jesus, No to Religion. So I'm pretty fired up. So if I talk fast, it's because I haven't been up here in a while and, and I'm really excited about this. But not only am I fired up about this series um, and today's message, but I want to say something. Not only am I fired up, uh, there's a part of this message today um, that is pretty dangerous and risky. So I'm just going to ask you to give me a little bit of grace because there's going to be a part where we get to it and you're going to go, oh, I don't know if I like that. I know as I wrote it and thought about it. I didn't like it. So I just want to forewarn you. And so listen, here's how I came up with this idea of yes to Jesus and the religion. This whole concept of this series actually came when I was sitting with a friend at a local restaurant, Nicoletti's. We were having lunch and I loved their pizza there. And I was sitting there eating some pizza for lunch and we were sitting there talking and we were having a good time. And eventually this conversation with my friend turned to God. And I remember my friend, he asked me one of the greatest questions I've ever been asked in all of my life. My friend asked me this question. He says, Matt, how do you have a relationship with Jesus? And I thought, man, what a great question. And he went on to say, listen, Matt, here's why I'm asking you, how do you have a relationship with Jesus? He goes, listen, I I've never physically seen Jesus. I don't physically see God other than creation and the stars and the moons and babies and, you know, good food and chocolate. Like I see God in those things, but I can't physically see him. And then he says, have you ever physically seen him? And I said, no, no, he's, I've never had a vision. I've never, never seen him like that. And he goes, okay. He goes, and, and, and I don't hear him audibly. Have, have you ever heard him audibly? And I go, no, 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 I've heard him in my heart. And I've heard him in my mind, um, but to be honest with you, I've never heard the audible voice of God. And he goes, well, then how do you know, like when he's listening and when he's busy, like how do you, like, how do you have a relationship with God? How do you have a relationship with Jesus? And it was such a great question that I said, you know what, someday I should do a series and today is that day where we're gonna say yes to Jesus and no to religion. And here's what I know, here's what I know and here's why you're here this morning is because I think you, I think I do, I think most people love the idea, they love the idea of a relationship with Jesus and not buying in or not settling for religion. But if we were really honest, even though we love this idea of having a relationship with Jesus, Many of us sometimes settle for religion. And it got me thinking, why do so many of us settle for religion instead of a relationship with Jesus? Um, and, and I came up with really kind of, kind of two ideas um, why we kind of, you know, are going to settle for that. But before I get to that, I want to talk about what is the difference between religion and relationship? Because you might be thinking, well, aren't those really the same thing? And they're not. They're very different. So I'm going to talk a little bit. We're going to show what religion is. We're going to put up here on the slide. And it looks like this. Religion is transactional. Here's what religion is. Religion is, if I, then God. See, that's what religion is. Religion is, we get on this religious treadmill, right? And we go, I'm going to go to church and then God should answer my prayers. I'm going to serve and then God should bless me. I'm going to pray and then God will make sure I have all that I need. If I do this, then God will. And so we have to understand the concept of religion is economical, it's transactional. Religion basically says, if I do this, then God 
owes me. Religion is always transactional, is not relational. doesn't matter whether it's the Christian religion or any other religion. All religions have the same concept, which is you and I have to perform to get God's favor. We have to perform or do things so that God may bless us or give us favor or answer prayers, whatever it is. Religion is always transactional. It's always this economic exchange of where we do something and then God owes us. But there's a difference between religion and relationship. And so we're going to talk about what relationship looks like. It's going to be the next slide here on the bottom. And here's what. Relationship is friendship. Relationship is, is friendship. It's, it's I know you and I care about you. And if you're friends with someone, they know you and they care about you. And that's what relationship is. Someone knows you. You know them, you care about them, and they care about you. It is not an economical relationship. And you might be going, aren't those really the same? And I go, no, 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 they're, they're very different. And then let me, let me just share a very true story that I think illustrates the difference between religion and relationship. Um, how many of you were around, I think it was two Saturdays ago, like it was a monsoon. It was a monsoon for like 14 days here in, in Maryland. Anybody, anybody here for that? I was here. Um, I had just come away from doing something I was really, really fired up about. Got something accomplished in my life that I wanted to get accomplished uh, for my family. Um, and I got home and I was just trying to enjoy a win. Have you ever come home and just tried to enjoy a win in your life? You're like, some good avenue. Like, so I'm sitting there and my wife's like, what's that noise? And I go, I don't know. And we start looking for the noise and uh, there's water dripping from my my ceiling. Um, and because of the rains, there must have been a leak in my roof. And I was like, I can't even get one day to enjoy my win. My roof is leaking. And so I do what all, all people my age do is when you don't know what to do, you go on Facebook or YouTube to figure it out, right? And so I went on the, you know, Facebook and asked all my local friends, you know, who's a great roofer? And I put it on there. And one of my very, very good friends who knows a little bit about handyman stuff because I know nothing actually stopped by my house unasked, I didn't ask me, just saw the post, heard that my roof was leaking, showed up at my house, got my ladder out, and was on the roof trying to fix it. Now, he wasn't trying to fix it because I was paying him. He was trying to fix it because he knows me and he... See, that, that's, that's friendship. And he's like, I can't figure it out. I don't know why it's doing this. I can see that it's leaking, but I don't know why. So what I had to do is because we couldn't figure it out, I had to get a professional. And the professional did not come out because they, they didn't come out because they know me and they didn't come out because they, they were coming out because I was going to pay them. That is a transactional relationship. Now, this roofer is great, good reputation, uh, you know, nice person, all that stuff, but they are not fixing my roof for free. I have to pay them. And that is the difference between religion and relationship. Religion is, I do, then God. Relationship is friendship. I know, I'm known, I care, they care. And who wouldn't want a relationship with Jesus. Who wouldn't want a relationship with God? Who of us would really want to settle for religion? But if we are really honest, oftentimes, because I know I've done it, is that we end up settling for religion. And I begin to think, is it, why is it that so many people who really want a relationship with God end up settling for religion? Religion. And kind of the first idea is something that I think we all understand, we've all experienced, and here's kind of the first reason why we'll settle for religion. And it's just that so we, just, we just don't know how. We just don't have the know-how to have it. It's coming, I promise. Um, we just don't know how to have a relationship. Nope, there should have been a slide in between there, and if there's not, we'll just go back to that other one. That's fine. We'll just leave it right there. Um, you know, the first reason is we just don't know how. Think about it. Um, you know what? We, we can't actually physically see God. Um, we can't actually hear God. And so, you know, we, we go, is he actually around? So how do I have a relationship with someone that I can't see, call, kind of see? Faith? Like, what does a relationship look like? with a God like that? How do I have a relationship with like that? And so the number one reason you and I will settle for religion is because we just don't have the know-how. And here's where I think we kind of trick ourselves. Listen, listen, it's really not complicated. See, I think here's what we think. There's got to be some secret way to relate to God because we can't see him, right? There's got to be some secret way. So we go through most of our life trying to discover the secret way. We never discover the secret way. And so we just give up and we settle for religion. And here's the great news is there's no secret way. 
Having a relationship with God is just like how you have a relationship with everyone else. And it's very simple. And so here's what we're going to do. Over the upcoming several weeks, we're going to talk about if you don't know how to have a relationship with God, we're going to talk about that over the next few weeks. What are some simple things that you already know how to do? We're just going to rediscover. But today I want to discover, today I want to talk about I want to talk about the number two reason. And this is the part of the message where, oh, it just, this is the part of the message where it gets dangerous. Like if you're already hot because the AC isn't running in the building and we pay the rent, I don't know why. We've been here for, you know, decade plus. They know we're here every Sunday. But if you think it's hot now, wait till I get started because the second reason that you and I may settle for religion is something that when I wrote it down, I cringed and it is, and it is really dangerous. Um, and I want to give you the reason why we might settle for it. I think it's somewhere in these slides. I'm pretty sure it should be here. Do we have the reason why we might? The second reason? It says number two. Does, does we have it anywhere on here? There we go. Reasons we settle for religion. The second reason is, is we want the benefit of the relationships, but without any of the commitment or the Oh, whoa, 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 Pastor Matt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I came for you to encourage me. Don't, 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 don't tell me any truth. Come on, don't say anything that might hurt my feelings. Like when I thought about this, because because I've experienced this, right? Like I want a relationship with God. I love the idea of a relationship with Jesus, but if we're really honest, all relationships come or require sacrifice. And I think one of the reasons that you and I may settle for religion is we love the idea of a relationship. But man, we don't want to pay the commitment or cost. And here's what, you know, listen, have you ever been in a one-sided relationship? Have you ever been in a one-sided relationship where somebody wants something from you, they want all the benefits of the relationship, but they want none of the cost, none of the commitment, none of the sacrifice? And here's what you know, you don't want a relationship like that. You don't want to be in a relationship like that. You don't want anyone to treat you like that. And here's what you know just from, listen, you didn't have to come to church today. You don't have to read the Bible. You don't even have to be a follower of Jesus. But we all know this truth, and we're going to put it on the screen. Healthy relationships, healthy relationships never are one-sided. Ta-da! Healthy relationships are never one-sided. I mean, think about that. When you think of all the relationships that you have that are healthy, none of them are one-sided. All healthy relationships require two people to be involved, and, and, and that's what makes it healthy. And so the number one reason we settle for religion is sometimes we just don't know how to have a relationship with a God we can't see. But the second reason, it's a little bit scary, it's a little bit more dangerous, is we want all the benefits, but we want none of the cost or none of the commitment. But the reality is, is in your relationships, in my relationships, in our relationships, we all know that healthy relationships are never one-sided. And I know I've thought this, and maybe you thought this. You know, Matt, is it really that bad to settle for religion? Because if I at least settle for religion, it's better than nothing, right? And you and I can fall into the trap that, well, you know what? If I settle for religion, it's better than nothing. And here's why I think when we fall for the trap of religion, but it's not only dangerous, it's dysfunctional. I mean, think about what religion is. If I, then God. If religion is transactional, think about what that means in your life. It means your soul gets drained. And here's why your soul is drained on religion. Because you always have to perform. I mean, think about it. Here's why your soul is drained when it comes to religion. If the only way God is going to hear your prayers, if the only way God is going to bless you, if the only way you're going to get protection, if the only way you're going to experience God in your life is through performance, then you and I constantly have to perform. It is draining on our souls to constantly perform. Not only do you have to constantly perform, listen, in religion, you're unsure. It's like eating a dinner, you don't know the calories, and then you jump on the treadmill of religion, and since you don't know the calories you ate, you don't know how long you have to stay on the treadmill and you don't even know if you're doing it right and that's what religion is you get in this mode where you're doing if I then God but you don't know if the if I is enough you don't know if the if I is right and so you're left on shore going I don't even know if what I'm doing is having an effect Think about religion. Religion may change your behavior but religion doesn't have the power to change a human heart. It may change the outside, but it doesn't have the ability to change the inside. Religion leads to bitterness. And you know why? Because we feel entitled. God, I did my part. And when God doesn't do what we think God should do, we get angry and we're bitter. God, God, I went to church. God, I prayed. God, I gave in the offering. God, I served, but you didn't answer my prayer the way I thought you should answer. And so religion will always lead to bitterness because it's an economic transfer where if I, then God owes me and we end up bitter. 
And here's the last part about religion. It just doesn't work. You spend time and energy going to church, doing religious deeds, whatever those religious deeds are. But that's not how God relates. That's not how you were made. You were made to be in a relationship. That's why we're relational people. That's why the worst punishment in all of human history is solitaire or solitary confinement. It's because we are made in the image of God. We're made to be relational. So if we settle for religion, we'll spend all of our time and all of our energy and we'll miss out on the very thing that we were made for. Which leads us to the opening thought. If you're one of those type of people, the type A people, you like to follow along, you are like a you know, A student and you want to follow on. This leads us to our opening point and the insert, which is this. It says, listen, settling for religion instead of a relationship with God will cause us to miss out on what we need most in life. Peace, forgiveness, direction, mercy, wholeness, purpose. The very thing that you were designed to do, if you settle for religion, you and I will miss out on that. And so the big question this morning for us as we talk about the second reason is we have to ask this question, how do we not fall for the trap of religion because we fear the price of relationship? Now here's the funny thing about asking that question, how do we not fall for the trap of religion? You and I already know the answer. And here's why it's funny, and you, are, you and I already know the answer, is because whatever it is that you want for your relationships to be healthy is really how we should relate to God. I mean, think about it. How do you want someone to relate to you? Do you want someone to relate to you just for what they can get from you? Do you want someone to have a one-sided relationship where they just take, take, take? Do you want someone who only wants you for the things that you can do for them? Do you want it to be just an act? And the answer is, of course not. And so we already have this, this idea. We already know how not to fall for the job because it's not what we want. Now, I'm gonna go give some several things and, and if you haven't been to South Point, listen, I give really long sermons and so what I do is instead of giving them all in one message, I break them up into a series. So this is, this is the beginning of one really long sermon and so you might be like, where's the Bible? And we're, we're gonna get to that here in a second. Um, and you know, hey, what's going on? And, and, and really your to-do is to come back next Sunday. And you might be asking, listen, Matt, are you sure that God really wants a relationship with humanity? And I know that God really wants a relationship with man. As a matter of fact, in Genesis, in the opening of the Bible, in the story of God, we find this in Genesis 6, 6, and thanks guys in the back, I may have missed this. And it says this, so the Lord was sorry he ever made them humans and put them on the earth. God had created mankind, gave them a whole planet, gave them the gift of food, sex, a whole planet, said it's all yours the only, the only kind of regulation was just put God first and we, we kind of you know, put our hand to God and said, no, we want to live life on our own. And here's what's amazing. When I grew up, I used to think because God was all powerful and God was all knowing and God was all present that God could never feel pain. But it says it is. When humanity said, God, I don't want to be with you, it broke his heart. And the reality is, is humanity has never sought for God. God has sought after us. As a matter of fact, that's what we see in a person, not in a religion, but in the person of Jesus. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul who encountered the risen Christ personally was writing to a church like this, some who had grown up in church, some who had never been to church, and some who had grown up with different faiths. And he was writing a group of people who were tired of religion and were followers of Jesus. And he wrote to them this, and in Romans, we're going to put it up on the screen, it says, for since our, what is this word? Our friendship. See, God wants to have a friendship. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were his, still his enemies. Listen, when you and I were doing our worst thing, when you and I were telling God, no, thank you, I want to live life the way I want to, I will hurt myself and others in the process, God sent his son to die on the cross. When you and I were doing our worst thing, he sent his son. For since our friendship with God was restored, not through the treadmill of religion, but through the sacrifice of Christ, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of the Son. And then he goes on to say this. He says, so now we can rejoice in our wonderful new, what's the word? Relationship. It doesn't say religion. It doesn't say religious duties. It says, so now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us we used to sing the song, Friends of God. 
God is looking for a friendship and a relationship. Now, here's something that you already know, that relationships have things that go with them. And I want to share a little story because when this, when this thing happened, um, it, it kind of brought clarity to me of like, I finally got it as an adult. Um, this actually happened when I was in my, kind of my early 20s. I was still dating. I wasn't married yet. Um, I had this party to go to, and I, I didn't want to go to this party by myself. You know, when you go to a party, you, you don't want to go by yourself. People are like, what's wrong with you? Why can't you get a date? And so I was thinking about people who might go on a date with me, and the list was very, very short, and, um, you know, my ears, you know, like, I was trying to find, like, how can I go not alone here to this party? And so I was trying to find someone that would go on this date with me, and I had this, 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 this friend who I'd known, um, and you know, she was she was okay looking, and she was fun and nice, and I kind of knew her family, um, and so I invited her to this party, and, and we had a really good time. I mean, she she dressed nice, and she was nice, and um, and it it was a real blessing to me. People were like, how'd you do that? I go, I don't know, right? Like, and so she went with me to this party, and this party had food, and so we ate some food, and this party has dancing, and I know I you know I look like whatever, but like I love dancing. We had a great time. I got on the dance floor. So if you ever see me out there clubbing. It's not because I'm out there partying. It's because I like to, you know, anyway. So I was out there on the dance floor and we were dancing and we we're just having a great time. And if you've ever been on a dance floor at a party, right, you know, they have fast songs. And so we were doing the fast songs and then the slow song came. And this is where it got a little bit awkward because we were, you know, we we're just friends, right? We were just going just as friends, just something fun. And, and so we get on the dance, dance floor and we're dancing, then a slow song. And it's like, I, you know, what do I do? Like, I don't want to act like I don't want to slow dance because that's somewhat rude. Like, no, nah, you know, <laughs> no, no, thank you. Like, I didn't want to do that, right? Um, and, then, and, and then, like, I didn't want to get rejected either. Um, but somehow we end up slow dancing um, on the dance floor. And I'm serious, it was like the movies. Like, have you ever had, been in the movies where like when you're, when they're slow dancing, it all seems to like slow down? And it just, you can feel the tension in the air and it feels like one of those, those movies. And all of a sudden we started getting closer and closer. And I was like, oh my gosh, are we gonna kiss? And I was like, man, this is, you know, I'm gonna get to kiss a girl, that's awesome, <laughs> right? And I was getting ready to kiss her. And I had this thought. And what I didn't tell you about the girl that I had taken to the party was is that she used to be engaged to my best friend. No, we were just going as friends. Like, but I realized as, as, as we were getting closer and closer for the kiss, I was like, what do, she was engaged to my best friend. Am I allowed to do this? And as, I, as we got closer and closer to kiss, I realized that like if I kissed her, like, Man, how would that make my best friend feel? And for all my brokenness and for all my stupidness, somewhere in my heart, I just felt like that was not. So for the one of the few times in my life, I did the right thing. And I backed away and I didn't kiss her. And I remember as the evening finished up and as we kind of hugged and you know, that was kind of it. I mean, that, we only went on that, that one date and, and that was it and that was fine because then I, you know, later I dated my wife and married her and you know, we got almost 25 years, so it worked out pretty well for me. Yeah. So, but here's what I understood is that when you're in relationships and you have friendships, there are always some things that will go with it. And you know what I discovered? It's no different with God. And so this morning, I want to go over three things that I think the scripture tells us and that you already know. Listen, the scripture tells us, but you've already experienced these in your relationships. I've experienced them in my relationships. We experience them in all relationships. And here's the first one we're going to put on your screen is, listen, healthy relationships always have, healthy, listen, healthy relationships always have boundaries. The reason I didn't kiss this girl, even though it would have felt good, even though it would have been pleasurable, it would have made the night, I could have, like there would have been a million reasons why I could have, but because she had been engaged to my best friend and we were best friends, he was the best man in my wedding, I felt like, hey, there are just certain r r rules to, there's rules to relationships. Think about it. 
Aren't there rules in the relationships that you have? Listen, listen, I want to take a quick survey. And if you're like watching online or you're at Loves Me, listen, let's do this all, take this together. Listen, raise your hand if you've ever had a best friend in life. Raise your hand if you've ever had a best friend. Okay, so most of us have had a best friend in life. Now, if you had a best friend in life and you went to them and you told them a secret, you said, you are my bestie, you're my BFF, you know, and you told them a secret, right? And you said, please don't tell anyone the secret. And then they went out and told everyone the secret you told them not to tell, wouldn't that be something that they, didn't they break a rule, a friendship rule? You would be offended. You'd be angry. You'd be mad. You might cuss at them. You might yell at them. You might put your drama on Facebook and it's never the way to end your drama. Don't do it on Facebook. Right? Because listen, you think that you know that in this relationship with your best friend, that healthy relationships always have boundaries. Listen, that's just the way it is. The reason that you would get mad if you told a secret to your best friend and they told it to the world is because you expect your best friend to honor a unwritten rule because we all know that when you're in relationships, all relationships have rules. And the only relationships that don't have boundaries are dysfunctional, unhealthy relationships that people shouldn't be in. Now here's the amazing thing and here's where it's gonna be a little bit dangerous and here's where it's gonna be a little bit difficult. We want our relationship with God to not have boundaries. I mean, can we just be honest? Like, well, this, yeah, come on, let's, let's all be honest up here, right? What we wish for is that God would love us and bless us, but that we could act however we wanted to, right? I mean, that's what we really want. What we really hope to do when we want, when we settle for religion is, I want God to bless me, I want all the relationship, but I want none of the uh, you guys forgot how to say that, right? I want all the benefits, but none of the? Right, we, we want all the relationship with God. We want all the blessings, but we just want none of the boundaries of a relationship that we want in our own. Listen, you want boundaries with people in your life. You don't expect your friends to tell your secrets. You don't expect, you know, your spouse to say bad things about you. You expect your kids to love you and respect. I mean, we just have these things in our relationships with people that you and I expect of them to treat us. Yet somehow in our relationship with God, we expect those boundaries to go away. But Jesus himself tells us this isn't true. Matter of fact, let's look at the words of Jesus. And here's what I love about Jesus. Jesus is just a truth teller. Jesus isn't interested in a popularity conscious. He just wants what's best for you and I. And here's what Jesus says. In the eyewitness account of the gospel of Matthew, he's asked this question, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And see, here's the great thing. If you think Jesus is just a teacher, then you can disobey Jesus. But Jesus is the only person that conquered hell and death, so he's not a teacher, he's God. And the last time I checked, God doesn't give suggestions, God gives commands. And so Jesus responds, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. What he's basically saying is, listen, if you wanna be in a relationship with God, then I need to be number one. You need to love me with all your heart, soul, and mind. Can you imagine a relationship with no boundaries? I bet all of us have had some experience with someone in our life that tried to have a relationship with us but didn't want to honor the boundaries of relationship. And you probably dropped them and got rid of them out of your life because it was painful, it was hurtful, and it was hard. And none of us here want to be in a relationship where someone doesn't honor the boundaries of relationship. And Jesus tells us what those boundaries are. To love him with all of our heart, to love him with all of our soul, and to love him with all of our mind. To basically put God first. Listen, this is really simple this morning. If you don't want to settle for religion that doesn't work and you want to have a relationship with God, there's just boundaries. There are just rules to relationship. You just, and that's, that's just the way it is. That there's no way around it, which leads me to, to observation number two, um, which is this, is listen, healthy relationships, actually, we're going to go, here's the big three. I love this. Thank you guys in the back or gals in the back. Listen, what will keep us from honoring God? Now, this is going to be really unpopular. You guys are going to hate me, but that's okay. I'm just going to tell the truth this morning, right? And then next week, we'll talk about light and fluffy stuff, right? Um, but you know what? Here's the three biggest things that will hinder our boundaries with God. Pleasure. I wonder how many of us say, God, I want to break my boundaries of relationship for pleasure. I don't know what it, that pleasure may be, but I, I know that I've done this, and I know that there have been times in my life where I put pleasure ahead of God. 
For some of us, it might be money. We're going to put our wealth and our income and our, and our generating and our stuff ahead of God. And then there are other times where we don't want to be made fun of or we don't want to tell people we're followers of Jesus or we don't want to stand up for, for justice. We don't want to stand up for someone who's getting made fun of. And so we'd rather be accepted than honor God with our words and our lifestyle. I could do a sermon series on all these three, but I tell you, the boundaries that we often break will always boil down to these three things. Am I breaking my boundary with God for pleasure? Am I breaking my boundary with God for money? Am I breaking my boundaries with God because I want to be accepted? Which leads us right into the second observation, and you know this about relationships. We're going to put it up here on the screen. And it says, healthy relationships always honor the roles appropriately. Two weeks ago, I did a wedding, and it was a beautiful wedding. It wasn't raining. It was sunny. It was really hot, but like, I, I didn't go long because it was a wedding. It was outside. I didn't want anybody to pass out. And it was just, it was a beautiful wedding. Matter of fact, um, I did this wedding, and I don't do as many as I used to do just because my life is full, um, but this young lady had been in my Young Life Club when she was a teen. Her father had passed away. Um, she had been a part of a church. We kind of walked her through that whole transition, and she married a fine young man. It was great to be a part of that wedding ceremony, um, and it was kind of funny because right after a wedding ceremony, um, he went over to one of the, uh, the bridesmaids and asked her out on a date. No, he didn't do that. <laughs> you guys look a little scared there. No, he didn't. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. You know why he didn't do that? Because listen, there are, there are kind of these things where you honor the roles of the appropriate relation. Listen, when you get married, you don't date anymore. Right? Come on, nod your heads. <laughs> Okay, and if you don't understand that, you don't need to get married. If you're married, the only person you should be dating is your spouse that you're married to right now. Okay, that's it, right? There are certain things that you honor. Listen, got any parents here? Got any parents here? Got any parents here? Listen, listen, to all the teens watching this, or listen, listen, moms and dads don't tell you things because they get some warped joy out of ordering you around. We tell you things because we love you. And if you're here and you're a mom or dad, you expect your kids to give you a certain amount of honor because listen, you taught them how to use a spoon. You taught them how to use the bathroom. You put a roof over the head. You put clothes on the back. Like you love them and you care for them. So you expect there to be them to honor the role as you as a parent. Like, listen, I tell my kids all the time, listen, they're like, you know, I'd like to make my own decisions. I said, that's great. When you're an adult and you can pay and live on your own and do your own things, you get to make your own decisions. When you live on, all the parents are clapping. Okay. How about this? God gives us life and grace. He gives us forgiveness in Jesus. And how many of us don't want to honor the rules and the things that he gives us? Not because he gets some warped joy out of taking fun, but because he cares and wants to see your life be full. See, we have to honor the roles. I mean, we get that, right? We get that, that when you're married, you give up dating. We get that, that when you're a parent of a kid, that your, your kids, listen, listen, when you have a brother or sister, you realize there's a level of that relationship that you have certain expectations of your brother or your sister. When you have a best friend, you, your best friend shouldn't hear about something from somebody that they don't know. They should hear it from you because you're besties, right? Listen, there's, all relationships have a certain level of connectedness. There should be a certain amount of honor that goes with that appropriately. And I love what Jesus says. Again, Jesus is just a truth teller. Here's what Jesus says. Jesus says this. He says this in Luke 6, 46. He says, why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? He says, if I'm really the Lord and Savior, then you should honor that role and, and you, should, you, know, you should respond and relate to me in that way. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and then, then, then you don't do... What I say. See, I told you this would be dangerous. I told you no one would like it. But I think one of the reasons that we'll settle for relationship is we don't like the commitment or cost of relationship with God. Because healthy relationships have boundaries. Healthy relationships honor the role. And it leads me to my third thing that we all know. Relationships, healthy relationships always include surrender. Got anybody here dating? Got anybody here dating? Anybody, anybody raise your hand? Slide it up right there, right? Anybody here want to be on a date? Anybody single? Raise your hand that way. If, so other single people here, you can just look around the room. I'm just trying to help you out, right? 
Anybody here dating? You know what I've discovered is when you're dating, especially as a guy, now this may be kind of what like, I know some guys like chick flicks and I'm not trying to, you know, stereotype, but I would just say for the most part, most guys don't like watching chick flicks. But guys, when they're dating, will always watch chick flicks because we surrender to what she wants because we want to make her smile and we want her to know we love her. And so we'll watch the romantic letter or whatever that movie is and all those sappy movies, you know, it's like, man, where's the explosion? Where's the gunfire? You know, stuff like like that, where, you know, where's the man's of? And, and, and we'll do that and we'll surrender when we're dating because, because we care about the other person and we gladly do that. We don't do that begrudging. It's not like, oh gosh, I'm just gonna pout here next to you while you watch a movie. No, don't talk, you know, we don't do that. We're like, sure, babe, yeah. Aw, you just cuddle a little bit more with me. You need to leave room for the Holy Spirit unless you're married. So healthy relationships always include surrender. True story, when, when I was, when I was uh, my daughters, I have two daughters, um, one's 19, one's 17, they both graduated high school, but my oldest daughter, when she was younger, um, she was really into birds, and I mean, my daughter, um, she's, she's very smart, um, she has, um, she's got some neurological things, so where her memory is really good, and when, when she focuses on something, she hyper-focuses, and so this season of her life, she was hyper-focused on birds, and so for all the presents and everything she wanted, she wanted these bird books, and someone gave her this bird book that had like a list of 100 birds, and as you got to the page, you could push a number on this little thing and it would give the call that the bird would make. And whoever gave that to him, I'd love to find them and beat them. <laughs> because there was a season where every night when we'd go to bed, she would ask me, Daddy, would you sit and listen to the bird? You know, what book do you want to read? She goes, the bird book where you can listen to the thing. And I'd go, sure. And she would open up the bird book and she'd go, this is the cardinal. And she'd go, this is the sound it makes. And I, I felt like saying, that's the same sound it made the last eight nights. And she would go, and it had like a hundred pages. And we get to like page 50 and I just, I almost couldn't take it. I, I literally, I was tempted to go into a room in the middle of the night and break it. But I didn't. But here's the thing. I gladly surrendered to do something I didn't want to do because I wanted to make my daughter smile because I loved her. And I'm amazed at the number of people who say they want to be in a relationship with Jesus. Right? Because in all relationships, whether it's a, you know, a parent relationship, a sibling relationship, a best friend relationship, a dating relationship, a marriage relationship, a parent relationship, right? In all the healthy, good relationships, we understand that surrender is a part. Except when it comes to our relationship with Jesus. Right? I mean... And, and here's the thing I don't get is that Jesus tells us to obey him, not because he wants bad for us, because it protects us from our own stupidity. Jesus tells us to obey God's rules because it protects us from harm. It, it protects us from destruction. God tells us to obey him and to surrender, to gladly make him st smile, not out of religious duty to get something from God, but because we love him and we want to make him smile and because we know that God has our best for him. I mean, here's what Jesus says. These are Jesus' own words recorded in John 13. He says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. We don't love God to get into heaven. God loved us when we were doing the worst thing. We respond in love. I've loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. Well, how do we remain in the love of God? When you obey my commandments, you remain in my. Listen, in our dating relationships, in our parent relationships, in our friendships with our boss, our work, we all understand that surrender is a part of healthy relationships. Yet I am amazed at the number of people who will not surrender and obey Jesus. And it says, just as I obey my father's commandments and remain in his love. Surrender is a part of the relationship. If I had to sum up the whole thing because it's hot and I need to lay in the plane, right? If I had to sum it up, it's like this. Listen, all relationships, good relationships, good relationships don't just happen. Can I get an amen? amen? Good marriages don't just happen. And if you think they do, you need to get some marital counseling. You know, good relationships with your kids don't happen. It takes work. Good relationships to your friend takes intention. Like good relationships don't just, they require intentional effort. And here's the reality, it's no different with God. That if you wanna have a relationship with God and not religion, 
That means it comes with some boundaries. If you want a relationship with God and not settle for religion, that means there's some honor due the relationship that is appropriate for Jesus being God. If you want to settle for religion and not relationship, then there's going to be no surrender. But if you want relationship, there has to be surrender. Listen, good relationships don't just happen. They require some intentional effort, and it's no different with God. So I want to close with a true story that just happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, a couple of weeks ago, my daughter graduated um, from, from high school, and so we were working on a graduation present for her. And, and I said, hey, I got this idea for your graduation present. And she says, I would like to see the graduation present before you actually buy me the graduation present. I said, fine. Um, and so I was on my summer study session where I, I work and, and prepare messages, get prepared for the whole year. Um, and I had a Saturday, and I don't usually get Saturdays off because I'm speaking on Sundays. And so I had a rare Saturday off. And so I said, hey, why don't you, you want this for your graduation present? Why don't we we go take a look at a couple and she said great dad let's go do that and so we drove to Annapolis Gaithersburg and Alexandria we left at like 10 in the morning and got home at like 7 or 8 o'clock at night like we spent all day and I remember as we were coming back from our last thing and we hadn't kind of gotten the thing that she wanted we didn't find the right kind of thing that she wanted um, and she said this to Mike in the car and I, it just kind of amazed me because she's a teen um, and man she gets some things really right um, and she said hey dad I just want to say thank you um, you took your whole day off and um and we didn't even get the thing we were looking for I, i'm really sorry and i i, I kind of paused for a second and i made sure i was in a place where i could turn and I, I looked her straight in the eye and go you don't have to be sorry this has been a great day i just got to spend time with you and it was worth it and here's what i want you to know today when you say yes to Jesus and no to religion, God doesn't want our religion. God is not looking for anyone in this room to check boxes. God is looking for a relationship because that's what he made you for, to be in relationship, to know him and to care and for him to know you and to care for you. And what Jesus calls people to when he says, come follow me, is not religion, but a relationship. And I want to encourage you, if you're here today, or you're in Lusby, or you're on YouTube watching, and you've settled for religion, I want to encourage you where you're at to just simply pray, to ask God to come into your heart and to have a living relationship. And if you don't know how to have that relationship, come back and check in next week as we talk about how to have a relationship practically with Jesus. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that when we stiff-armed you and we said, God, we want to do life on our own, we said, no, thank you, God. You gave us a whole planet. You gave us goodness. You gave us all these gifts, and we told you to go pound sand. God, that you pursued us. God, that, that you chose to chase after us, and that while we were your enemies, Christ died on the cross and he conquered hell and death and no person, regardless of the era, the continent, the language or the culture that they were born in, all of us can get off the treadmill of religion because of what Jesus has already done. It is finished is what he said on the cross. And you're not asking for our religion, you want our hearts. May we surrender them to you so that we can experience what it's like to live life every day in partnership with you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're ready to take the next step in your spiritual journey or continue to support South Point, you can connect to a small group, serve on a team, and give financially by clicking the box on the right. To watch other sermons from South Point Church, click the playlist on the left. Click the logo to subscribe.